upload it to the last minute. I think something's going wrong with my computer, but it's all oh. good. <laughs> Don't stress. It's time to relax. That's what oh, yes. about. you got to, as they say, you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. Well, that is true. But this is our finale. This is a big one. I want this well, to go really well. Absolutely, absolutely. This is the finale and uh, I think I'm quite excited about it and uh, I'm sure we've got uh, we've got a few minutes so we'll wait for other people to join in as well. Sure. Uh, yeah, but tell me what are your thoughts so far Danny? How's it going? What is the feedback we have received from uh, people who have been attending? Just let us know while we, people are joining us. Sure, absolutely. Um, it's been wonderful, to be honest. Um, I've asked for a bit of feedback and we've had that. Um, we've had people enter the uh, the competition. They've done their homework. Oh. Um, yes, we've had awesome. quite a few entries, actually. Um, oh, so, yeah. So, I don't know if the uh, dietitians, Hannah or Julie, are joining us this evening, but I'm sure they'd be very proud of the work that the, the uh, participants have done. So, um, to pick... Um, three winners was was a bit tricky actually oh but, yeah um, i'm sure it yeah. must have been but <laughs> but any any sort of uh, key comments or anything that uh, i would like to ask the audience actually just a show of hands uh, how many of you and i can see there are plenty of regulars as well as yeah. they call it and uh, I'm, I'm really grateful and appreciative of that because it's the first time that we have run this kind of eight part series and I'm just waiting for our special guest to sort of join in as well, Dr. Makar, uh, before I uh, introduce him. I did remind him as well, so hopefully he's on time, but he's a very, very busy GP. But having said that, I would like to just have a show of hands or if you can just type in the comment box, just in one or two words, any comments about who, what you feel about the program or the videos so far, the webinars that have been doing, I'd really appreciate that. Give us some love, guys. Uh, no, we'll, we'll only read out the nice ones anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, being the panelists and co-hosts, uh, I think we can filter that. But uh, yeah, it'll just be good to know, just so that we can prepare better for the next time. Oh, thank you, Amanda. She said it's been awesome and very helpful. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. You know that's what? Fantastic. I have to say, I feel like this is a little family. Like it's you know a group of regulars because I've been monitoring like who's been registering each week and we've had a consistent group that have um, you know been on week after week and I think they're going to be a bit sad that this might be the last one and to be honest I am you know um, yeah. we've got some more other oh I, well that's wonderful should I read them all they're fantastic oh look uh, yeah and you are welcome to read them towards the end I would say but we've got Dr. Maka here as ah. well my good friend yeah, Ralph he's here uh, beautiful Hi. beautiful Hi. Ralph, so nice to see you I nice can you. see you're you're so enlightened with all your books in your background you look <laughs> like uh, the this is a back, just a backdrop <laughs> uh, his holiness has arrived you know we are so honored to have you here that will get you're me looking, to come for sure you're looking radiant as always uh, and uh, i'm so delighted to see you here patricia please ignore accidentally i up, upgraded you as a co-host but just ignore you don't have to stress all is good so we might use that later though we might we'll speak to her oh yeah know? Okay, well, yeah, she can relax. That's okay. She said, okay, thank you. Pat. That's okay. We have Put just under pressure. <laughs> oh, she's she's your friend, is she? No, she's my sister. Oh my God. <laughs> there you go. Well, we might want to speak to you. Family event. Not in the family. That wasn't an accident. That was actually, yes, let's do that. We'll, we'll talk to you, Patricia, towards the end. So please be ready. <laughs> okay, so Danny, let's get started. We, all of us are here and I'm so excited to see Rauf as well. He's such a busy GP. Thanks a lot for your time that's for us. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm honored, but we'll have that conversation uh, further on. But let's hear from Danny. Danny and Ralph, I think I haven't introduced you Hi. to each other. Let me just say that, Ralph, this has been eight part video series that we have done as a webinar, primarily targeted towards, uh, you know, people. Uh, the title was self discovery and self isolation during the COVID. Of course, we are now emerging from all of this, uh, but it's been a wonderful journey, not only for people who are regular with us, but uh, who have been attending this, but for us as well, like myself and Danny, because we've learned so much about how these circumstances, difficult life circumstances, 
change us and how they affect Absolutely. us, affect our thinking. Uh, yeah. So it's been a wonderful journey and we are so honored and grateful that we've been able to add value to our clients. And we've persistently had an audience of about, you know, 20, 25. And at one uh, webinar, we had 37 attendees. So it's been fantastic. And uh, I think we would love to continue this journey moving forward because I'm quite encouraged personally from the feedback that we have got. So, yeah, I will now hand over to Danny, who's my uh, co-host and she's been a a uh, lovely co-host. I can say that, you know, Danny, the energy that you bring to okay. these webinars with your presence is amazing. Uh, and I think your ability to connect with the audience has been fantastic. And I'm truly grateful for all the wonderful work you do on Facebook as well. So oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'll pay you later for that compliment. <laughs> sure. We can, I take credit card payments, by the way. <laughs> oh, you probably do. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. And it's lovely to meet you, Dr. Is it Maka? Is that how you say yeah, it? Yeah, you can call me Raouf. You can call me whatever. Raouf, that's a All nice good. name All too. Good. Well, tonight is our, our final one. And I wasn't even aware that this was the topic, but I think it's a wonderful topic to discuss about, you know, the size of your body being a reflection on how much self-love you have. Um, and I thought initially, I thought, what? How? We're not going to talk about this, are we? But when I when I looked into it a bit further, I realised, you know, it's actually a good topic to to touch on, and I think it will resonate with quite a few people. So, as usual, um, we always have our special guests and so forth, and they'll be speaking a bit later, and I can't wait to hear what the doctors have to say about this topic. But um, I always start off with my story and uh, for me tonight this will be probably a little bit emotional because you know I've had a bit of a journey which which I think a lot of us can relate to and I've only got two slides to share with you tonight and I usually love my slides and stuff but I thought that two would do and would send the message across. Um, just to give you some background the first video um, that I've got is of me roughly 15 months ago but I'd been like that for a few years to be honest um, and I was making a video to show my GP um, because I wasn't able to get to her for um, a visit and I was feeling unwell and so I was taking a video of myself in my worst condition to show her when I was well enough this is what I'm going through and this is how I feel sometimes and I can't get to you you know and so it's a raw, uncut, unedited video. I've added some music for effect because <laughs> I love to edit. You made it on TikTok, you mean? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I didn't share it on TikTok. I just oh, made it Oh, thank God for that. I would not share. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so it was, it's one of those videos where I was just feeling frustrated. I was getting progressively worse. And I just wanted her to see what it's like to feel like and be me. So I'll just have to get that up, obviously. So let's have a bit of a look at that. And you'll need to let me share my screen, please, Arun. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Oh, let me okay. just get out of... I was getting a bit distracted with the... Uh, yep. There you are. You're a co-host now. Oh, great. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Let's have a look here. Always forget how to share this actually. So let me get this video. Yep, share. Oops. Okay. Yep. yep, that right. Okay. That's good. Go. We can see you. You can see me? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, let's go present. Let's go back to this one here. Okay. So this is the video. This is the that first I'm... slide, Danny. I think there was there a slide. No, that's the last slide. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. Got got it, got it. <laughs> no, oh, is this you? Uh, no, <laughs> I'd rather say it's not. Good, yeah. good. I like that answer, by the way. No, neither admit nor deny anything, Danny. <laughs> Rob, well, this lady is a powerhouse. <laughs> I can so see let's have a look. This is about 15 months ago. Like I said, raw, uncut, unedited. I never thought when I was doing this that I'd be showing this, actually. But let's go. I think it might resonate. So whole week before but um, profuse sweating I don't know if you can see there's sweat dripping down my face um, that's every day it's not just um, around this time it's even worse um, really depressed mood like um, I just feel 
been there really bad and my anxiety is through the roof and I've got no motivation or energy. Um, walking is basically um, really sore like this. And um, I usually have to use the walker. And I have to sit down straight away because you just can't walk very long. My lower back is really bad, but also just the legs are like like jelly, like they ache, you know. This, I just want to show you that. Okay, so they can just, yeah. And then I know. Wow. Um, oh my God. That was yeah. moving, Danny. Yeah, yeah thank you. For um, so you to get to send it to your GP, is that right? Yeah, oh, well, I was going to eventually go and see her, and I wanted to show her um, how bad it gets sometimes where I feel I, I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I, everything is, had no energy, so lethargic, sweating profusely. It wasn't even hot, you know, and, and just feeling revolting. Um, and, you know, the question would be, well, how did I get this way? You know, I was not always like that, you know. Um, and I hope that you guys can sort of shed some light in that area. But look, I, I will talk about it from my understanding. I've got some comments here, Danny, just to yeah. say that uh, they all have your back. And, um, uh, you know, she said that is so raw. Thanks for sharing, Danny. Susan has said that to you. Uh, and Sarah exactly. has said that, you know, she's truly showing that, you know, how amazing you, amazingly well you've done. So that's Thank you. Don't, don't let me all teary tonight, guys. <laughs> I don't want to be that, Danny. But, um, but thank you. Um, so from my understanding, our environment sort of affects our mindset. Um, and our environment could be a number of things, a number of factors that's going on in your environment. And I think that it also affects the energy that we radiate, um, in my opinion. And so if your environment is constantly a source of ongoing stress or trauma for you in some way, your mindset will change and will reflect that. Um, and it will impact on the way you see yourself. And, and the result is we start to radiate low energy. We feel emotions like guilt, um, shame and blame. And that's what happens when you're radiating at that low level. You, you can't actually see things at a different perspective, even though you probably are wanting to. And I think that when you're in that state, you start stop you stop loving yourself as well, you know, and um, you engage in self-sabotaging behaviours. Now, I know in my case, I was trying everything I could to get well, but ultimately, I wasn't doing that well. And so um, I would eat to, to, to cope, you know, for me, it was food. It wasn't just food. I mean, you could see I had immobility. Um, and, and also um, medications helped uh, me gain some weight. But I was also using food as a comfort because I was just feeling so bad. Um, so when we radiate high energy, which I can proudly say I feel like I do more times now than I did back then, um, we feel the emotions of love, compassion and self-care. You know, we love others and we love ourselves as well. Um, and that's how we can be the best versions of ourselves and ultimately the best version for others. And that's how we should live, I think. We should be living this way. That, that wasn't living for me. That was surviving and just hoping for a miracle and for better days. Um, and I hung in there because um, of my children. And I'm, I'm proud to say that. They were what kept me going, knowing that I needed to be well for them. So, and how does this question there, please, if I could, is that yes, for a mum, it's great that, you know, you had your kids who would be your inspiration to stay on. But was there anything besides the kids that actually kept you going that, you know, yes, there is something better. And we don't have to get into details about environment and all of that for, because it could be different for all of us. Oh, it is. Yeah. That's and an it could excuse. be multiple factors. Yeah. yeah. But anything um, else that was driving you? 
Yeah, probably the fact that I've been well, you know, and that I couldn't understand why I was so unwell. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, you know, there was a part of me in there that wanted to get out, you know, mm-hmm. and and wanted to be the old Danny. And I used to say this all the time, I just want old Danny back. I just want old Danny back, you know. Um, and so there was inside of me, there was the will to do it to make that change, to, to, you know, get the outcome that I needed. But of course, the motivating factor for me with the children to be something that they would be proud to be associated with, you know, um, and, um, but ultimately, you know, it was also me not wanting to give up. And I think life is precious and we're here for a reason, all of us, you know, it's not a coincidence that we're here. Um, and, and so I wanted to see what my life journey would be and I was hoping it wouldn't stay like that, you know. So how did I, how did I get to a bit different stage? Well, let's have, a, let's have a little bit of a look at the, well, clearly you can see that I've changed, but uh, let's have a bit of a look at me 15 months. You needed months someone's later. touch though. I did. <laughs> what, yours? <laughs> Someone's so, fishing for compliments here. <laughs> I know. Look, you know, and in saying this, definitely having the weight loss surgery played a significant part. But I do know a lot of people that have weight loss surgery, but their self-worth and their self-esteem and their thinking doesn't necessarily go along with the weight loss. And therefore, their weight loss sometimes isn't that successful as well. So. There was a lot of work that we talked about over the weeks that I was doing as well. And one of the things was I thought radical change. You know, having bariatric surgery is a radical decision. It's not a little step, you know, it's a radical decision. Um, I uprooted my life. I moved interstate. I started somewhere else. Um, you know, I changed my environment completely because I, it just wasn't working. I couldn't move forward. And that was a risk because I wasn't sure I was, I was going to improve my environment. It's unknown, you know, and it wasn't easy, but in a way it pushed me even harder to get this right. Um, and, and I started to think, you know, I'm going to do this. Instead of, instead of thinking, I hope, I get better, I am going to get better. And it's like faking it until you make it. And I thought, I'm gonna do some radical stuff to get this to work because what I've been doing hasn't worked. And I was fortunate enough to have find somebody fantastic, yes, that's you, Dr. Arun, that gave me the tool, you know, but also the motivating factors were there and the environmental change was enough, enough shift for me to go, hey, I've got to do this. This is my last chance. I need to, you know, get better. So let's just have a little bit of a look at, this was last week, and I'll just tell you the background on this as well. I did this video last week when I got some good news and I just did it for TikTok and a bit of fun. So here What, you're having a baby? <laughs> <laughs> no, that that wouldn't be good news. Sorry, no offense. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just to uh, spot. Here it is. I'll show you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Leave home. See ya. Oh my God. See ya, home. Let's get started. Where are you heading off? To work. I've been working this week. I'll have you know. I'm in demand. Oh my um, God. Yeah. Like so. The story here is is. I just. This is again. I think you can will yourself into good things. And I just thought a job came up, and I thought, let's go for it. Let's give it a go. I found out later there was thirty applicants, and um. And the job was full time. And I thought, wow, I'm going to go from not really working to full time. Um, It's not forever, the job. It's just a a little replacement position. But it's in an area that I love and an area that I was doing before. The old Danny was doing this sort of work. Um, And I got the job. Um, Wow, congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. And um, yeah, and I've got to say, it's been a tough week this week, trying to navigate full-time work and the hours along, the children and all that. 
wow, my goodness, has it been rewarding and uplifting. I have loved every moment of it. And I can't wait to go to work tomorrow as well. Um, so it's a different sort of tired, you know, it's a tired where you feel satisfaction, not a tired where you're desperate yeah. for help. I think so, all doctors know this feeling. Sorry? I think all doctors know this feeling. The oh, yeah, I absolutely <laughs> would, absolutely. Um, so am I full of self-love now? Most days, <laughs> you know. We um, have got a lot of comments that was keeping me distracted from Rebecca, Patricia, that they are all so... I can't wait to read yeah. them. Good, good. Don't delete them. I want to read them. No, 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 no. You, you will get to read. I'm just filling it in as you go. Thank you. Um, up. <laughs> So I'm much more confident now and I have um, higher energy and I think I'm radiating that love and compassion and a bit of self-care for myself and I'm, I'm living again, you know, which is wonderful. Do I still have stressors in my life? Of course. Uh, I think people would be lying if they said there wasn't stress in their life. Um, Self-doubt, definitely. But I think I'm just more equipped now to navigate those stressors um, because I understand how our attitude and our mindset play a powerful role. Um, and so the environment is one thing, but also our mindset and our, the way we see it can also alter your outcome. So before I pass on, and I cannot wait to hear uh, the doctors discuss this topic, I just want to give you my final little slide um, as my little goodbye and thank you for <laughs> joining in. Um, oh. And it's just this, uh, this resonates with me quite a bit. The butterfly does not look back at the caterpillar in shame, just as you should not look back at your past in shame. Your past was part of your own transformation. So if you're in currently the caterpillar, <laughs> just see it as it is a stepping stone to becoming that butterfly. And if you hadn't been a caterpillar, you wouldn't be the beautiful butterfly you can become. And I, I don't regret what I've been through because it's ultimately changed me, but for the better. So, yeah. That's a beautiful quote, uh, Danny. That's an amazing uh, quote. And it's, it's got so much meaning, you know, the whole journey of information to transformation. And I give the uh, example of the caterpillar turning into a butterfly. You do. It is so beautiful and so it's got so much meaning behind it. Absolutely. Ralph, any comments on that? No, it's, uh, it's fantastic. It's, uh, I love uh, Anthony Richardi. It's, uh, the, the idea of self-forgiveness is crucial to self-love. So yeah. sometimes we get stuck in our uh, tracks because um, we cannot really forgive ourselves deeply, even though that we've been forgiven by others or forgiven by nature or forgiven by God, but we cannot forgive ourselves and we keep subconsciously blaming ourselves for things and that just kills us dead in our tracks. So absolutely spot on. Uh, um, looking back always takes you off the road ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing too. I mean, even though someone can be ill, you still feel guilty for being ill. You know, you think I'm a burden, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of stuff. And, um, and you do, you carry that guilt. Um, but no, it's, it had to happen, I think, and I'm in a better place now. So I'll, I'll stop the sharing uh, so that we can move on. So Dr. Arun, you, you, did, you did introduce um, our other lovely doctor. Am I the rose between the thorns tonight or am I the... I'm well, uh, oh my God, <laughs> you had to call yourself the, the rose, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 we are all flowers. We are all flowers in bloom. Are so, we? <laughs> no, let me oh. let me sort of you know take over in the sense that you know i'm so excited firstly to have my good friend ralph who thanks a lot for inviting me but can i say something that look i get many many gps who refer patients to me some i just hear from once in a while and some i build relationships with but i can say hand on my heart ralph is someone who I have not only deeply respected, but he is a man with whom I've connected on such a deep level, not mm -hmm. just because he's on a spiritual journey himself, but I think it's, it's something energetically vibrated and resonated between the two of us. He practices medical weight management uh, in the Northern suburbs of, his, of Melbourne, where he's got a very busy practice. But I think Ralph has got a heart that is much more deeper and warmer than just looking after patients. He actually wants to create a spiritual impact in people's lives. And Ralph, I won't get uh, any further between you and the audience. I want you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself besides GP work that you do. 
and uh, and I'll then share a screen uh, which I've got my first slide on uh, so that uh, you know I would be able to uh, just kind of you know uh, I should say uh, let me just get on my, yeah, my first slide so that people have a bit of a context. And I do want to mention before Ralph gets on is that, friends, what we are talking about today is a topic which may or may not, all concepts of which may or may not resonate with everyone. I say this as a disclaimer that neither myself nor Dr. Ralph have an intention to push our views or an agenda. We are not here to make you a member of a cult or anything. That's not the agenda. Take the best and leave the rest. That's what I always say. Take the best. If something can help you shift your life, take it. We are here at your service. That's all I would say. So, Ralph, please, uh, I would like you to share a little bit of your journey with our audience and what got you where you are today. Thanks a lot, Aaron. It's, uh, the feeling is mutual, tell, I'll, I'll tell you honestly. The, um, uh, we have got kind of this uh, deep connection. I think we've got uh, similar goals in life and um, this kind of causes our wavelength kind of to superimpose and, and to become stronger. So we always feel this strong connection when we meet each other. And um, it's a pleasure for me to, to talk to you and Daniela and Patricia and the rest of the audience. Uh, I'll um, look at, um, there's not much to uh, discuss other than um, uh, um, telling you a bit about myself. It's, um, um, I would say I'm a GP because GP, I don't identify myself as being a doctor. I'm, I'm, I'm a human being in search for um, the truth. That's, that's who I am. I'm uh, trying to be true to myself, true to uh, um, the reason I was created for. And I think that this is, uh, um, I think Gandhi and probably uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Sartre said that, that, uh, that the, the, the true happiness is when you know what you were created for, what you're born for, what you're here for. And I think that everything falls into place. And I think that the topic um, uh, self-discovery or self-love that we, we are focusing on today is a very pertinent topic to, to uh, um, um, every single one of us. And especially at this time, where we were forced um, to stay at home and, and do a bit of introspection and look into ourselves and see what we are about. Because sometimes when we are kind of in the motion, getting up, going to work, and then going home, having dinner, and then reading a bit, and going to sleep, and doing the same thing the next day, just have a bit of a break on the weekend, it's just like somebody who's like uh, kayaking down a, a, um, some rapids and you're just stuck in traffic or you're rushing with traffic and you can't get out of traffic to take a breath and mm. rethink um, what you're here for and what's your priorities and what, who you really are. And this moment that we've been forced to have, this moment of self-discovery or looking inside ourselves or introspection is, is a crucial uh, uh, gift, I guess, from nature or uh, from God, from where I'm standing, so that we can kind of wake up and uh, re- um, rethink our, um, our uh, priorities. So just a, just a couple of points that I, I thought that it might be something, something that I resonate with uh, very much and, and something that I think that um, I, I discuss that often with my patients, whether I'm seeing them for um, uh, discussing some medical problem or for weight loss um, or just uh, some counseling, because I do quite a bit of that as well. Um, just a, just a couple of topics that I just wanted to raise up and it, it probably it will be more more worthwhile if we kind of leave it to you guys to see what questions you kind of come up with. Yeah, I was going to say, Ralph, that I might just request the audience and Danny, you could be the... Uh, yeah. If there are any questions, we'd encourage you for Dr. Makar or for myself, if you have, please feel free to type in the chat box so that we can direct this conversation, which is most meaningful for you. I do have a section on slides, a selection of slides that I can share, but we are really here to serve you. So if there's anything, any question that you have, we would really love you to type it in the chat box 
which is pertinent to this whole aspect. We're not talking about diets here. We're not talking about calories and all of that. But you know, you get the theme of what we are discussing. So uh, without uh, further interruption, Ralph, yeah. Tell me, the question that comes to my mind, Ralph, is that you run a medical weight management program. From a self-image, self-esteem perspective, you know, what is the biggest challenge that you come across as a clinician who's giving advice to individuals who see their body image as, you know, this is not me. The person that they're seeing in the mirror is not them. There's a, this a great question. It's, it's a, it's a great, that's a great point that you raise, Aaron. Um, I think that, I mean, I just saw a, a patient a couple of uh, days ago um, um, and her self-esteem did not really change with the weight loss. Mm. And that brings us back to what is causing the weight gain in the first place and what will help to maintain the weight loss because mm. it's fantastic to lose weight. But mm. if you have not clicked to change from, and this might be a bit too technical, but it's really important, from the idea of self-esteem to idea of self-worth because they're two different things. Yeah. Because self-esteem is what the society wants to get you to have. Yes. Which is completely different of self-worth because self-esteem, even when we, since we were kids, we are pushed to calculate or to, to regard our worth based on uh, position, possession, um, look, performance. So, I'm sure that uh, uh, Arun would, would have uh, kind of gone through that where you are only kind of uh, um, regarded that you are, have achieved when you have to get A or A plus. Anything below that, then you are not By achieving good enough. A lot of pressure, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You've so got to do better so than you the get, parents. You get, that. You, get <laughs> your, you get your self worth from that. And you grow up a bit and you go into high school and it becomes not just your your performance but it becomes your your looks as well you have to look well because that's how you subconsciously feel that you're going to be loved and then you grow up a bit and it becomes possession or position whatever you the way you uh, what kind of car you drive whatever uh, amount of money you have what kind of leadership position you have and your self-esteem is truly based on that but is self-esteem self-worth and i think what draws us back all of us uh, whether it's uh, um, lack of self-care or lack of uh, a proper uh, um, diet or or any kind of setback in terms of our goal lives is this failure to differentiate between the idea of self-esteem which is clearly based on performance and self-worth which is has nothing to do with performance i remember back when i was a kid in sunday school uh back in church uh, one of the very common um very kind of all use anecdotes that Sunday school use, uh, teachers use is grabbing a, a $20 bill or a $5 bill and crunching the, 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 the $5 bill. And um, before crunching it, you would lift up the $5 bill and say to the kids in Sunday school, so who wants the $5 bill? And everybody would say, yeah, 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 me, me, me. And then they, he, the teacher, Sunday school teacher would crunch and say, okay, who wants it now? And of course, it's still worth the same. And every, everyone says, yeah, me, please, yes, yes. And then he would put it on the ground and steps on it and say, okay, it's now full of mud. I've stepped on it with my shoe. Who still thinks that he wants it? And everybody still says yes. And he would tell us, this is your self-worth. It's not the way you look. It's not the way, uh, yeah. uh, what car you drive or yeah. the clothes that you wear. Very, it very is, your worth is intrinsic. It's, it's, yeah. I've got a, it, uh, got a slide on that which yeah. is uh, <laughs> quite pertinent, actually. Self-esteem and self-compassion, you know, on, on two sides. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, um, we, we miss that. We miss that, the fact that, 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 um, that our, because our self-perception changes because the, 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 I mean, there's two ways of looking at yourself. Hmm. And look, going, coming from a, a Middle Eastern background or an Eastern philosophy background, um, sometimes your self worth is who you come, who's your family, or where you grew up, who's the name of your family. So if you go to the Middle East, it doesn't matter what your name is, you're known by your family. If you're from this family, then you're worth something because it's a good family. Yeah. And if you were following um, the, the, the very kind of the, the catastrophic um, story with this kid 
who got uh, stabbed, um, uh, I think, uh, from a Samoan or um, kind of um, Polynesian background. The, guy, the, the, the family was saying, we don't know who the, 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 the perpetrators are, and we don't know their family. So the family is very important. So you get your work from your family. Mm. And then we go into, this is from the Eastern kind of society. You go to Western society and they will tell you, oh, no, don't worry about your family. You don't care what people say about you. You just care about what you think of yourself. But sometimes even the way you think of yourself is warped. You think of yourself sometimes, I mean, I'm now 55. When I was 20, I looked back at what I used to think of life when I was 15. I, said, oh, I was so stupid. And when I was 25, I looked at myself when I was 20. I said, 20? I was so stupid. And now I know I'm 55. And when I'm 60, I'm going to look at me now. I'm going to think, oh, I was, he was so stupid. So actually, the way, even the way we think ourselves in terms of self-worth, is very warped by society, by media, by Facebook, by whatever. So really it is the intrinsic value, but the fact that we are human, the fact that we are created, we are kind of the, the God's masterpiece, or if you want to call it our natures, the nature that has led to us being so special. Every single one of us is special, not because of all of that, but because of us being unique in every single way. That makes mm. us having self-worth. And the, the more we realize that, that we should be loved and we should love ourselves because of this intrinsic value that the Bible says that we are God's poem. Like we are poetry. Every single thought, every single way, every single idea, every single beat of love in our heart, this is poetry. And the, the quicker we realize that, the quicker we're going to get out of this circle of trying to please people and then fall out of pleasing them and then go into self-indulgence and whether this is drugs or eating or whatever kind of addiction we get into. Hmm. I think you make a great point. Um, and, and I know that a lot of women go through these challenges with weight gain and stuff like that. And often I think to myself, yeah, it is because we've probably had careers and things like that where we got our self-esteem from who we were too and what we used to do and you know what labels society put on us you know Absolutely. educated teaching whatever it is and then all of a sudden you, you become well a mum you know or, or not necessarily but you know and and that then you want to do that job right but society holds you know what you're doing your career and all that quite high and so you hold that yourself high and then all of a sudden you've lost that and so you've lost your sense of identity as well and then you, sure. you know, you're trying to find who you are but yes. you're already full you're already who you are it's just that we we connect with you know what other people place of, of importance in our lives you know spot on, spot on. Yeah, and, and that's what you by your <laughs> external, uh, you know, achievements and designations rather than the actual person that you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then if you put on a bit of weight because, you know, you, you've gotten pregnant and, you, you know, you put on a bit of weight and stuff like that, then that part of your image sort of self-esteem sort of goes down as well. And then you wonder why a lot of women end up, you know, eating themselves um, to death just about, you know, because they've lost that self-esteem, but that's not really what we should be focusing on. Is that what you're trying to sort of say? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's just, it is a, a futile exercise if we are trying to get our self-worth from achievements, from being the best uh, um, uh, mum that might be. Of course, it's great to achieve that, but this is not who I am. This yeah. is not who we are, because mm -hmm. you're going to be trying to be the best mum you can be, and then they grow, the kids grow up and they fail to call you on your birthday and you're going to fall in a heap and you're just going to open the fridge and you're just going to grab the tub of Sara Lee and you're going to go for it because the kids that you've spent all your life dedicating, sacrificing for, they did not remember your birthday. The same thing with the job. You can kill yourself being the best doctor you can be and then you have some kind of a bad day or a bad patient who's kind of ungrateful and then you're going to go back onto the Sara Lee or you're going to go back onto the smoking or you're going to go try to do some retail therapy. And if we can, if the self-worth is always self-esteem, if self-worth is always try to achieve something rather than loving yourself for who you are, for the fact that you are a unique creation, mm. for the fact that you are special in every single way, you will always be chasing your tail. And once you end up falling, 
because what you have spent all a certain amount of energy and love has not kind of gratified you with the love that you wanted back from people because you're trying yeah. to please people and yeah. please yourself make yourself feel worthwhile by achieving something but not by just being um yeah. it's, it's it's not going to be a successful exercise at all hmm. However, right. this is not this does not mean that um realizing your self-worth will prevent you from being a high achiever it's not that at all. No, it, it, no. Why are you trying to do what you're doing for? So right. there's a big difference between I want to be in the best physical shape I can be. I want to look great. I want to be like Daniela. I want to achieve, get out, go to work, be the best person. Like you said, Daniela, I want to be the, 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 the old Daniela. If I'm thinking I want that because I want um, uh, the girls to love me. I want to look good in their eye, or I want to look good in 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 society. I want society to respect me or to love me. If this is the target, if this is the directive, this is always going to be disappointing. But if I say I want to be who I want to be, because I owe it to myself to look better, to achieve better. I owe it to myself to forgive myself. I owe it to myself to accept who I am with the good, with the bad, with the blemishes, with the, with the weight. It does not mean that I'm going to be a slob. It means that I will accept and myself. Without the hair as well, I think, Krauss. Pardon? Without the hair as well. I, I think that it's, I it's uh, we've accepted that. <laughs> it, it's accepting what you cannot change and <laughs> change. <laughs> Well, I can say I did look into it a few years ago, but can I just say something over here? That, that's a fantastic perspective, Ralph. But one thing which I want to say is that, you know, when someone's caught in that loop of, you know, one thing after the other, then there is environment which is affecting your thinking. You know, there is toxicity of whatever type, whether it's your boss, it's your spouse or whoever it may be, you know, it doesn't matter. It's an external trigger for you. It's very hard for individuals to see that self-love. You know, they might say, hang on, you know, you have achieved whatever you had to achieve. That's why you are talking about self-love. You know, you have, uh, Daniela, you are now where you are. You're looking so beautiful. It's easy for you to talk about it. Look at us, you know, or look at me. And this could apply in any area of one's life, whether it is body shape, it is finances, it's relationship, whatever it is. I guess that's where it is crucial for you or for an individual to actually understand and this particular quote really shifted my own perspective around things that we don't see things as they are we see things as we are because we are viewing the world with the filters that we wear you know like we have a filter that uh, as as you were saying ralph that you know anyone who's been raised in the eastern or uh, middle eastern cultural background would say oh you know it's your family that determines your self esteem uh, whereas someone else might say hang on it's an individual property you know you could be uh, having a high self esteem doesn't matter what your origin is so uh, i guess it's it's what has been our conditioning and my question to you ralph would be what could be a practical strategy that you could give to the audience or something that you use yourself. You are a busy person. You wear a few different hats, a dad, a practitioner, all of that. What do you do in your practice to actually shift things for yourself? Let's talk more personally. Great question. Look, I think that what I do and, 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 and what I find what I advise patients to do, it's, it's, look, it's, it has to start by a point of change. So it has to, there is, there is a very interesting book by a guy called Jordan, Jordan Peterson. He's a Canadian who, um, who has written a, 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 a bestseller um, and it's, it's called 12 Rules for Life. And rule number two is a very interesting rule and I, I use that and I teach my patients to do that as well. Rules number two, the rule number two, it says, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for. So mm -hmm. the, the, the interesting, uh, interesting um, statistics is that out of 100 people that I give prescription for, and Aaron would give prescription for, 
um, only that would be that would probably be surprising to a lot of people that are listening to us now but these are statistics only two-thirds would actually go and fill the prescription so out of the three out of the hundred only two-thirds will fill the prescription and out of the two-thirds that will fill the prescription only 60 percent will actually take the medicine Mm. Oh, it's it's amazing. So well, Rob, almost half the people that we prescribe for um, do not take the medication. However, well, Ralph, I, I, I I've stopped giving the prescriptions. Can you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I can hear you now. Just had a bit of internet uh, kind of lag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which is that's that's just great. great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I'll get to that one day. <laughs> So, so, yeah. um, so 60, 50 percent don't end up getting a prescription. Wow. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that, but imagine that you are a father or a mother or even an owner of a pet. If you bring me your son or daughter or, um, or your mom or dad to be treated, you will make sure that you get the prescription for the kid or the, for the mother and father, and you will make sure actually that you call and that they will take their medication on the right time and the right dose and fill the prescription and take the course of antibiotics or make sure that the diabetes is good. So often we, the reason that we don't look at ourselves, take good care of ourselves and lose this track is the lack of responsibility for ourselves. And we let ourselves go, put on weight, stop exercising, stop trying to learn, stop trying to know, stop trying to um, broaden our horizon. And the trick that goes along with this moment of enlightenment where you understand that you are worth every single minute because of who you are, is to start treating yourself as if you are somebody else that you're caring for. So you look at yourself and say, okay, what do I need now? Let me just treat myself as if I am looking after my sister or looking after my brother. What does, does he need? Does he need to see a doctor? Does he need to go see a surgeon? Does he need to change his lifestyle? Does he need to change his, his, his dietary habits? Does he need to change his exercise program? And the way we do that, the people are usually much better um, looking after others than looking after themselves. And we let ourselves slide. So I think a practical way of, of kind of trying to do a quantum shift in our the way, the way we treat ourselves is just treat yourself as if you are somebody else that you're looking after. What does he need? Does he need a wake-up call? Does he need to be pulled and taken to the gym? Does he need to see a doctor? Does he need to have a look? Does he need to have a blood test done? What does he need to do? And this is an easy trick to kind of trick yourself into taking things into your own hands. That's a good point. I think um, as a mother, I'm guilty of that. I'll make sure my kids have eaten and sometimes I'll forget to eat myself. Do you know what I mean? Because as Absolutely. long as they've eaten and I definitely, if they're not well, I'm definitely yeah. thinking, well, let's go get the medicine, you know? And for me, I'll, I'll put it off next week, the week, uh, you know, and, and that's true, you know? And I don't know if that's just um, a thing you do as a parent or, no, you no, know? I think, I think it's, it's, a, it's an innate thing for us. We mm. are kind of, we are programmed, wired, to, wired yeah. Yeah, to look, to, to, to get used to looking after others. Either we saw our mothers like that, our fathers like that, being altruistic and kind of sacrificing themselves. But for us to be able to, to help our mm -hmm. fathers and mothers and kids, we need to be the best for ourselves that we can. And this is something that we have to dig deep that, that, that there is. And this is in, this, this kind of worthiness of, is innate in every single one of us it just needs to have the chance to be kind of out in the light they, uh, there was this famous story where they asked uh, uh, michelangelo uh, about his the, the, the statue of david this marble statue of david that um, everybody knows you see it in um, in florence and they were asking him so how did you manage to kind of sculpt this amazing sculpture of David that everybody adores as his number one sculpture in the world, uh, kind of Mona, Mona Lisa sculptures. And he said, I didn't do anything. I just had to 
free David out of this block of marble. So David was always inside this block of marble. He just had to take this paraphernalia away so that David can show himself. And inside every single one of us is this statue of David, this beauty inside every single one of us that has nothing to do with all the, the kind of stuff that the, the environment wants to convince you. You just have to do a bit of, and I owe it to myself approach. Yeah. I owe it to myself to do that, to go and take care of myself. And then the David will show. And Ralph, I feel also that, you know, self-care or self, uh, you know, love should not be mixed with self selfishness because I think uh, people think, oh my God, if I'm, I'm not looking after my kids, even though I am hungry and I'm getting hangry, which is hungry and angry, <laughs> yes. uh, I'm just losing my temper on them. Yeah. I yes. need to step back. I need to calm down, take a sip of water, have a piece of fruit or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. I have now, and what you say is so true that you actually have, and the way I've come to understand this is that sometimes you have to be an observer of your own emotions. You actually have to be. In neurology, there is this term called metacognition. What that really means is you are observing your thoughts. And I think that is a skill. That is a skill of observation that can be developed. There are terms that are now well recognized in the neuro and the mental sciences, one of them being neuroplasticity. And what yes. it means is that it's not that your brain is wired in a certain way, it cannot be changed. Because that's what our understanding was that by the time you become 13, 14, 15 years of age, you are locked in for a particular type of personality. That's actually not true. Your brain is constantly rewiring. And I think that's where it is really, really pertinent to understand that this is a skill. Observation is a skill. And I think we all have a duty to ourselves. We owe it to ourselves, as Dr. Makar is saying, that we have to learn this skill if we have to master our own selves. We don't have to master anyone else. It's our own selves that we have to do. But I think, Rauf, one of the things that I often see is, you know, uh, that, of course, body is a reflection of your mind, but we are often caught in this balance between the heart and the mind. Like, you know, our mind says, or our brain says, you know, people mistake this. It's like a very fine line. Like, you know, my brain says do this, but my heart is feeling something else. And that's a bit of a hard decision for people to make sometimes because, you know, it's a battle that is going on internally. There's nothing external, but it's an internal battle. And uh, I don't know what you would have to say to someone who's in that, you know, what to do in that moment when the heart and the mind are kind of, you know, conflict. in conflict, exactly. Yes. Do you have any uh, suggestions? Yeah, look, it's, uh, I think that it's, it's a fantastic point that you raise. Uh, I, mean, the, um, I think that what you mentioned about metacognition, it's crucial to that because uh, the, the concept of metacognition is knowing why we think the way we think. So yeah. it is it is the idea of stepping outside your brain in a way and looking and saying why I am feeling that way and consequently why I'm thinking that way. And this will push you in the right direction. The old uh, um, Greek philosophers and then after that old Christian philosophers, they look at neither the mind nor the heart. They look at the center of yourself, which they call it the noose. The Greek people, the Greek, Greek philosopher call it the noose which is neither your brain intellect nor your emotion as such, because your brain can be wired in a certain way according to your, your uh, uh, education, and your heart can be kind of uh, programmed in a certain way according to your emotion and your needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Right. Um, but there is this center, this core that we have in all of us, which is a nice amalgam between the brain and the heart. And this, the concept of metacognition gets you in the right scope because it gets you out. I'm sitting here, I'm talking to beautiful people and we feel this, this kind of family feeling going and we have this sharing of idea which kind of makes me feel good about myself. So um, this is great. So imagine me going out, I'm late, I have to go, I've got another meeting at nine o'clock and I'm feeling anxious about that. Mm. The idea of metacognition that you just mentioned, which is kind of 
very uh, uh, opportune and timely is if I'm feeling anxious about being late, what am, I, what am I feeling anxious for? Am I feeling anxious because if I'm late, I'm gonna look unprofessional? Am I feeling anxious because this will bring down my self-esteem? If I'm, am I feeling anxious because this will make people look at me different way? Or I'm feeling anxious because I expect too much of myself. So this will kind of, kind of separate the weed from the chaff. And this is the same way. Am I, am I feeling negative about my body image? Because b being overweight will affect the, people, the, the way people look at me or because I owe it to myself to be the best form of myself that I can be or because I will not be able to run with my kids if I'm overweight. All these things are valid things, but there are valid things that will last, will help me to take um, a positive uh, step into the right direction, which yeah. is me, or it will be things about people which is coming from an emotional point of view or mental point of view and it's not coming from a core point of view. So the core is, comes back always to who you really are in the middle between emotions and intellect. That's right. And Ralph, you know what, that, that's beautifully worded. And what I say is when people come to see me for surgery, I, and they t give a variety of reasons, you know, my husband wants me to do this or my, uh, uh, you know, my, my, I want to do it for my kids and all that. But I always come back to the same point. You know, you got to go and ask yourself, no one should be able to convince you to take a decision against your own intuition. And yes. I think what you're referring to is your intuition, the innate energy that sits between the heart. We call it in, in you know, the, there are different cultures, different, you know, yes. religions, yes. Call them different energy centers. We call yes. it the central, the fourth energy center. And we talk Same about idea. It. Absolutely. Yeah. Same idea. And it is there in the, uh, in the Jewish cultures and all of that. They have all recognized the various energy centers in the body going from yes. the bottom of the spine all the way to the top of the head. And the bottom line is that your intuition, your soul actually knows what is the right thing to do. We need to learn to tap into it. And I have personally started like, you know, this is going back three, four years ago. Every time I have a difficult decision to make in my life, I say, you know what, I'm going to pause. I'm just going to pause. I go in a state of relaxation, even if it is for five minutes. I sometimes go in my car, say, you know what, I'm outside. I go in my car. I just do some three deep breaths in and out and I relax myself and I say, please allow me to make the best decision that I can in this moment with the information that I have. That's all. You, you, otherwise, I have realized indecision is a big killer. It's a stealer of dreams. If you make a decision, either it will be a right decision or you will learn what you should not be doing. Yeah. You know, just like Thomas Edison was asked that it took him 1,000 steps to find the incandescent lamp. And he was asked by a journalist that, don't you feel ashamed that you had to fail so many times? And he said, his answer was so mind blowing. He said that there were 999 ways that, that steps, sorry, there were 999 steps to finally making the incandescent lamp. And I had to go through those steps. What an amazing attitude. Beautiful. Beautiful. I was blown away. That's fantastic. And I think, you know, like you've said, when we've had discussions as well, that um, just make the decision and you'll work out how it's going to happen later. You know, just say... Yes, and work out how. That's work how. out the how after. Just make the decision because it's either going to be the right decision or a learning experience. You know, so it's, it's a win-win in some ways. We're going really well over here. And, you know, I think we are going to be running short of time now. This discussion is so engaging. I could go on for the rest of the evening uh, just filling up my... Uh, cup of tea. But I guess, you know, uh, what I would say, uh, Ralph, is uh, uh, certainly I felt that, you know, even though there is a lot of emphasis in the world out there that, you know, your brain needs to be sharp, work on your mind and all of that. But I think what we are finding more and more is that, and this has been recognized by well-known psychiatrists and psychologists like Sigmund Freud, that in small matters, trust the mind, in larger ones, trust the heart. And by heart, I trust that what he was referring to was the intuition. Because the heart is now being recognized as the seat of your emotion, seat of your wisdom, 
it's an inner guidance mechanism. And uh, I think this is very crucial. And science is now telling us that the heart is actually an electromagnetic field generator. It generates a huge, uh, up to three meters wide electromagnetic field around you. But more importantly, it can influence your feelings, your, it has a wisdom and it has got 600 times greater electromagnetic field than your brain itself. So I think what I am beginning to get more and more convinced, and, and this is being substantiated by research done from the Heart Math Institute in United States and other places, is that you've got to develop that intuition. And we owe it to ourselves. That is our soul seeking expression. That is really what it is. It's your soul that is seeking your expression. And sorry, I'm a bit of an analytical person. Uh, like I like to see the evidence and the research, but I think there are some things that science is still catching up on. And that's where it falls in the realm of spirituality or quantum, uh, because sometimes we don't understand that as well. So I would only say, friends, my realization is that, you know, do not give or do not wait for science to give you the permission to do things that you firmly believe in. If something resonates with your heart, test it out yourself. And I think that is what is going to be giving you a better connection with your own self. Because ultimately, once you develop a connection with yourself, you have really found your authentic self, isn't it, Ralph? And that's what the whole journey is, to find your real self. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree 100%. It's, uh, it's, uh, there is much more to us than just uh, uh, an intellect and, uh, and uh, a physical body and some emotions. Um, there is, we, we have a soul and a spirit and this soul and spirit is looking for meaning. And the meaning will ne definitely never stop at a job and a partner and some kids. And if it stops there, then our existence, our journey, 70, 80, 90, 100, it will be a very kind of superficial existence. There is this search that I told you about. And in my case, the search is this, this kind of faith in a creator, which makes me believe that we are here for a reason. And this reason is to glorify this creator in every single thing I do. So, and this gives my existence depth and meaning. Meaning. Um, and this permeates through every single culture, whether it's going to be uh, Eastern, Middle Eastern, Judaism, Islam, uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, Eastern philosophies, the idea that there is more to us than just what meets the eye. Absolutely. And I think, uh, look, uh, we might have to wrap up, but I just wanted to say, that uh, we have been, Rauf, just wanted to share this with you, that we've been running our radical wellness programs, which is basically really around a, uh, we use yoga as a mind body exercise. We do meditation. We've been doing this as a group program. Yes. Uh, we did it live in the first term of this year, the second term because of the Corona and all of that. We did it over Zoom as an online class. Well, that's so, great. Yeah, and Danny was uh, one of our regular sort of, you know, attendees for the Zoom one because obviously we could reach out to people who could not normally attend. I had someone who would be joining in from sale every Sunday morning. Oh. That's awesome. so it was amazing, you know, and some great insights and realization. So this is a mind body program that yeah. I developed. It's not just a yoga for stretching and feeling relaxed. It and is there's really, much more to yoga than just but, stretches. Yeah, and it, we're doing it in a very targeted manner to teach individuals what is it that takes to learn that skill, as you mentioned, of becoming aware of yourself. Yes. And Danny, I don't know whether you've got a few words to say. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to speak on this. And I think that's how we're going to get more in touch with our purpose and what our soul is trying to tell us. You know, that, that innate wisdom that's within us that we can't feel because we, it's clouded by everything we're supposed to be and do and all that sort of stuff. True. And if you, if you strip that all away, if you strip it all away, that's when you connect with yourself, your real self, if you like. And that's what I've found this program does. Um, you know, so much so that I think we've done some meditation, um, Dr. Run, and, um, you know, we've actually mentioned that it's brought tears to our eyes. We're doing meditation and all of a sudden 
there's an expression of emotion, tears, you know, and you have to ask, well, what's that? To, how, why? You know, because you're connecting. I think you're connecting yeah. to your soul that wants to, wants to come out. And when you quieten everything around you, by yoga, meditation, and even group intentions where, you, you know, you, you draw in towards yourself and you give space, you, you can actually work out what you're supposed to be doing. You can see yourself for who your true self for the first time in, in, in a long time. Yeah, and you're just stripping away all the layers that society's put on you and it's, it's raw, but it's so powerful. And I think this is the way to get to yourself by quietening the environment well Let's yeah as as i say you know there is a beautiful quote which really really touched me that you know your soul knows how to heal yourself the challenge is to quieten the mind so that you can listen to your soul we are so much engaged in a chatter that goes all around us that we have become numb to the voice of our soul which dr Rauf has mentioned is like your you know your intuition that is guiding you. So I guess uh, I would encourage, we are starting again on the 19th of July. So anyone who would be interested uh, would be very uh, sort of, we deal with all these five pillars, Ralph, as a part of this program, starting from the mind, then go to the body. And for each pillar, we have a presentation that goes before the yoga session and the meditation session. So information leading to transformation and our uh, content has evolved over the time. And I'm really proud to say that, you know, it's been more than anyone else. I feel so honored to be of service. You know, and that's my life mission that, you know, well done guys. That's awesome. So, yeah, I think uh, I am going to sort of, you know, thank from the core of my heart, uh, Ralph, yourself, you thank have you for, uh, for involving uh, me. That was a great pleasure. Thank you so much. And I'll hand it back to Danny, who is uh, now going to take on the role of a school teacher. <laughs> uh, he's got a few little things to say. Danny, if you're set <laughs> over limit, just to let you know. Oh, okay. Well, better be quick. Better be quick. Yeah. Um, just, I think there's a lovely comment here though, that because everyone's been typing away and, um, and it's, uh, so have a bit of a read there um, towards the, uh, Dr. Rolf is amazing. He's helped me also get through this journey. When I backed out, he helped me to get myself up and get positive again. And also thanks to Dr. Run for giving me life again. This is such a great topic. Wish this will go on every day. <laughs> um, thanks, I can I can stay and listen all day. So great to have this opportunity of both the best doctors. Thanks again. So there's Thanks, been awesome. lovely comments so on that. And oh, thank you also to Danny. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I feel so underqualified this evening, but I'm going to put on my teacher's hat. And um, with that, we had a competition. And um, it was a very simple competition in some ways, but the whole purpose of it was to get you to do something practical, hopefully to help you um, set yourself up to succeed with your wellness. And um, we had lots of entries, actually. I, I, yeah, I love doing corrections and stuff. So oh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> you <laughs> um, and it was hard to pick the winners, I have to say. So I've had to choose four. So I hope you don't mind, Dr. Arun. You're giving out sure. four diaries. Getting, can you just tell us again, please? And uh, just as a prize or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, people had to submit a an eating awareness record to look at what time they were eating, how they felt when they were eating, um, mm -hmm. you know, who they were with and, um, and how hungry they were. So it's that awareness again, you know how we talk about awareness about, yeah. um, you know, our thoughts and our emotions, well, awareness in that context too, you know, why are we eating? Um, so I had quite a few in about that and it was, I would love to talk to some of these people and I know we're running out of time as always, but um, then the other one was basically to do an audit of what you have in your kitchen, in your pantry, in your fridge, mm on the counter and having a look at, mm, okay, are we setting ourselves up for failure here? Have we got food that is not substantial, not going to sustain us and is actually going to make us more hungry and unhealthy? And, and can we do an audit of that and maybe remove some of those things? And some of these have been amazing. We're talking about full on renovating of a pantry, you wow. know, where, They've just gone, right, that's no good. They out, 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 out. And in and I yeah, and I've got photos and stuff like that. So it's been absolutely terrific, mind-blowing in some ways, to be honest. And 
so let's let's announce the winners, shall we? And the what yes. do the winners get? Well, aren't they lucky? <laughs> they get um, a free journal, um, which is you know creating a new you by Dr. Arun, and it's a fantastic resource because it goes through the practical stuff, and that's what we really want. We want to know how do we set ourselves up for success, you know, mind, body, and soul. So there's a lot of practical stuff in there. But, um, you know, there's also accountability. So you can actually write down, you know, what you're eating, what you're drinking, are you moving, are you being grateful, or are you in a, a negative mindset, and so forth. Accountability. So you'll get mm -hmm. one of those. And also a session with myself as a wellness coach, just to have a chat about anything that we might need to work on, put some tools in place to help you to succeed, especially those who have had bariatric surgery or are contemplating bari bariatric surgery or just a stuck and are thinking, how do I get from like the old Danny to a new, a new version type mm -hmm. thing? And, um, you know, I, I would be probably teaching that from my own experience, but also from a bit of um, knowledge that I've picked up along the way as well. Um, so yeah, and it's a complimentary session with me. So these four people um, have done exceptionally well. And thank you to all the entries. Um, so we need a drum roll here. <laughs> okay, let's do that. We will get everyone to clap. Okay, uh, virtually just, clap. Okay, so Nicole Betson, you have won. Awesome. Um, That's great. Ashley Jones, well done. Awesome That's effort. Great. Amanda White, I mean, we're getting pantry wow. pictures here. I know. And this is not favoritism, but Patricia Kidney, who got her. Oh, no, 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 no. I should have said that. You know, I, <laughs> I challenge that. Evidence, evidence. <laughs> recount. We count. We demand the recount. <laughs> Hers was fantastic as well, very thorough, and she was very organised to get that in. So congratulations, but thank you to everyone who entered. Awesome. And um, basically, please email us your addresses and we'll send those books out to you. And also, I will email you a direct link to make an appointment with me when it suits you guys. Um, so well done. And if I can just conclude by just saying um, thank you so much. It's been such a, a rewarding experience for me. Um, thank you, Dr. Arun, not just for the surgery, but for inviting me along oh. to um, co-create and co-host this program. It's just been so amazing. And, you know, you got to surround yourself with good people, high energy people, and that's how you keep your high energy going, radiating. Are you, you talking know, about me here, Danny? I am. Oh. I am <laughs> definitely talking about you. And I think, you know, you, you inviting me across to do this gave me the the vibe that, you know what, hmm, I must be doing okay that I'm getting asked by a leading surgeon to participate in this. So maybe I could go for that job after all. So, you know, it's it's true that surround yourself with positive people. That I, I can say this. I can say this honestly. I leaned into my intuition as we were just discussing, I said, you know what, this is the time when we need to reach out, Ralph, this is what we were thinking. This is the time when we need to reach out to our community, to our audience, to the people who really, really need us because we were getting into self-isolation and we knew what happens yeah. in self-isolation. You're on a Netflix binge and you land up yeah. gaining, or as they say, the COVID kilos, you know? So yeah, well, that's happened for we, sure. We don't want that, you know, for our, our community. So. Thank you, Danny, for, uh, you know, taking up the offer. And just to finally um, say, if you would like, you don't have to, of course, but if you found some worth in this and you've enjoyed it, we would love for you to write a review. Um, you can either email us your feedback, but if you would like to write a review on our pages, um, Dr. Arun's page, um, well, he's got a few going, but the Melbourne Gastro Surgery page or um, the... Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. Yep, yep, or the Radical Wellness. And also my page, Radical Wellness by Design. We've got very similar page names and awesome. stuff because, you know, we've got the same sort of uh, vibe, I think, going on there. So please do leave us a review. We would love for you to do that. <laughs> And uh, is there anything else, Dr. Arun, Amazing. that you'd like to say? Look, I think uh, there have clearly been comments requesting that, you know, we would love to have these sessions, more of these sessions in the future. And guys, we would certainly do it. It's really been a, you know, I should say, a wonderful journey 
and as I said, you know, that it has allowed us the honor to be of service. And that's what our existence is about. Like when you find true meaning, true purpose, like Dr. Makar has found a meaning, uh, and that meaning may be different for all of us, you know. But for me, it was about service. And uh, I see that in Danny's vibes and Danny's energy as well, that we feel so happy. And I often say this, and our success lies in your success, truly. So I want to thank every one of you who's been on the call uh, and who's been a regular with us for so many weeks. It's, it was eight weeks, uh, but we have thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. And uh, Ralph, once again, from my heart to yours, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the good work that you do. You know, I hear so many raving reviews about your compassion, your connection to your patients. You're too kind. Thank you so much, Ralph. You're too kind. <laughs> thank you so much. And Danny, once again, uh, thank you so much. It's been a delight knowing you, working with you, and, and seeing your success, because I think your success truly comes from a shift that you created in your own heart. And I think that's where your success came. It was not just surgery, even though I would say, yes, 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 I <laughs> away. But you know what? It was you who changed it, because you changed the meaning that you gave to your, your own transformation. And what your past was became a fuel for you. You actually use that fuel as to fire your success. So good on you. You are a true inspiration for so many people. So oh, thank you so way. much. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. And uh, and yeah, I am I am living my purpose now, which is helping students. That's what I'm doing. I'm a student counselor, and I'm absolutely loving it. And I go to work. You know, the time flies, and when time flies, and you're working you know that you're doing what your soul's telling you you should be. And I just love it. So rewarding. Yeah. And, so, and so has this been. So thank you so much. Okay. And, uh, oh, where can you buy the diary, please? Oh, so some of the people that didn't win want to buy this diary. So we'll get just, all those things. I think just write to our office. That's all I can say. Just drop an email or just call our office and we'd be, uh, you know, the girls can assist you through that. Oh, these people are so beautiful. I'm going to miss my Thursday night family. Me too. Me too. It's not going to be the same. We're just going to have to keep doing this, I'm afraid. Well. <laughs> we, might, we might take a week or two break. <laughs> Ralph, out. are you up for it? Because I think it must be you. It's your knowledge and that is uh, energy. This, this a nice amalgam. That I think this is uh, absolutely great. Thank you. That's lovely. Yeah. Well, we definitely will take that on board. And uh, yes, I think we'll be back. Hey? We'll I be back. As Arnold Schwarzenegger said in Terminator, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say we will be back. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, everybody. All right, guys. Thank you. Ralph, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All the participants and all the audience. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time. Thanks for having us over. Pleasure. Beautiful. All Thank the you. best. Take care. Bye-bye.